So in the last video, we talked about type conversion, where you could change an integer into a string or a string into a byte and so on. And in this video, I want to go over expressions, statements and blocks. I'll also be going over comments. So then you can also document your project as you create it. So the first thing I want to go over is expressions and expressions consist of variables, operators, etc., that evaluate to a single value. And let me just clear what that means. So essentially, let's pretend we create a value of total and that's going to be of type int, which equals a random number plus 202 between uh, 1 to 500. So this whole line here is an expression because all of this code right here evaluates to this one total. So we can use this total later and it will be one value. And the same thing goes for this value of number check, which takes this if statement and it returns a single value such as either more than 500 or less than 500, depending on what the value of total is. Then down here we have two statements, but uh, let's just click on play so you can see what this does. And as you can see that the total that was calculated here was less than 500. They gave actually 324. So the if statement decided to say, you know, it was not more than 500. So we're going to print out the less than 500. And this string was assigned to this value over here. And that's what we get when we print line it down here. That's why you get total is less than 500. But moving on, let's move on to statements, which are very closely related to expressions. And a statement is essentially everything that make up a complete unit of execution. So this whole line here is a statement and that's because everything written there creates a line of execution. And down here we've got an expression which we use later in a statement because again, this completes the line of execution. This creates a value. And if we click play, you'll see that when we do two plus two minus one, we get quick maths. Of course it equals three. And this one prints hello mate. Well, let's get rid of that real quick and move on to blocks. And a block is a group of statements, zero or more, that is enclosed in curly braces. So two examples we have here. One is the function main. It has this block right here, which means from the opening curly brackets to the closing curly bracket is one block. And we also got one inside the for loop. So everything inside here is a block. And we've got a var which was declared and initialized with the value of zero and then we've got this for loop which doesn't it doesn't really matter what it does but the whole point of this is to show you that this part here is the block everything inside here are the block statements and the next thing i want to talk about is commenting how to create a block comment how to create a normal comment but let's pretend you have to document something such as val item equals one plus two and then we write print line item. I pretend you had this line of code in your project. Other people might want to know what it does, or maybe even you want to know what it does five years after having written it. So something very common for coders to do is to use these two slashes and write this code does nothing. And it's highly debated that good code shouldn't need comments, but write as many comments as you need if it helps you remember what it does and write efficient code at the same time. I think that's the best combination you can wish for. And also to mention, there's another way of commenting. There are block comments and there are normal comments. This is just a normal comment, but if you want to make a block comment, you just have to hold shift control plus slash and it will comment out this entire line. You can also just slash asterisk and start writing something and then click enter and it will write a comment line because if you do this block code, you can write as many lines as you want in between and it won't change anything. But if you use this double slash, it will allow you to create more code as soon as you click enter. One more thing that might be confusing is depending on which country you're from, the shortcuts might not work because I have a Scandinavian keyboard. Sometimes some of the shortcuts really don't work. I think it's designed for American keyboards. But if you go to code, you'll see that there are the shortcuts here in case your keyboard's different. Otherwise, you need to go to file and settings and just change the shortcut to something else. And that's actually all I had to discuss in this video. In the next video, we'll be talking about input and output in Kotlin. But uh, thanks for watching this video. If it was of use to you, please consider leaving a like. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.